you've probably passed by without a glance. Without realizing the great things grown here. From the ground, to the galaxies, Nashville business means bright ideas. The greatest businessman ever come from Nashville, he still is in my mind, was James E. Caldwell. He came here in the 1870s, he had no money, and he went to work basically as a wholesaler down on Lower Broadway. At some point he was walking around downtown Nashville on a Sunday. He didn't work on Sunday, but he was going to get his mail, I think. Someone was demonstrating how a phone line works. Mr. Caldwell ended up a few years later taking over this small, small business. Uh, it was known as the Cumberland Telephone and Telegraph Company. He expanded it all over the South, and it was in 1900, 1910, probably the biggest company in Nashville. Really, what, how country music started is that life insurance companies need good things to invest in. The bigger of the companies was originally called the National Sick and Accident Company, it became National Life, and they decided to invest in a radio station, which they called WSM. But out of that came, came um, you know, a show called the, called the Grand Ole Opry. I did, I'm just so proud to be here. He ran a drugstore which eventually merged into a chain of drugstores. Somehow Colonel Sanders, the minute he met Jack Massey, and apparently he said, the minute he saw Massey, I just want you to know I'm not gonna sell my company to some slick southern blankety blank. Um, he ended up selling the company to Massey, and Massey moved Kentucky Fried to Nashville. The five most successful years in its existence, it was based here in Nashville. Um, became a huge company, bigger than McDonald's. Come back and see us. They also added things such as the, um, the drive-through window. Who came up with it is a big dispute. All good ideas have ten fathers. Bad ideas are bastards. So Nashville did have its failures, oh yes. Mr. H.G. Hill, who owned all the grocery stores in town, was another spectacular success as a businessman. There's things he tried that didn't work. Um, in the 1920s, Mr. Hill purchased a riverboat, uh, rechristened at the H.G. Hill and tried to start a riverboat business up and down the river and he ended up capsizing his boat two or three times and they finally gave up on that venture. Turned it into, the, turned it into a party boat, sort of like the General Jackson, but it lost a lot of money. A company that was both a huge success and a colossal failure was the General Shoe Company known later as Genesco. General Shoe Company grew to become the largest apparel company on planet Earth in the 1960s. And when the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's was made, Tiffany's was owned by Genesco. But unfortunately, it, it collapsed simply because shoe manufacturing went overseas, because men stopped buying 10 pairs of dress shoes, and because apparel manufacturing went overseas. You have to be able to, when you're a businessman, be able to sleep at night regardless of what the situation is. And regardless of whether you're losing a little money here, or losing a little money here. All these people, whether it's James E. Caldwell or Massey or any of them, they, they had to, times when they could head a when they had a hundred things they could worry about, and they didn't. <laughs>